we are driving between Roswell and Redoso. We're in the town of Tinney, and um, we are just blown away by how beautiful the landscape is here. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, actually, I think we're in Lincoln County. We which, are. Yeah, which is uh, pretty famous. The Lincoln County Wars, which were the versus cattle baron wars ended here. And it's also the home of the courthouse slash jail that um, Billy the Kid made his most magnificent escape from. So, but um, it's just gorgeous this morning. This is the actual village of Lincoln. Billy the Kid was hired as a member of the Regulators, which was actually like an army of outlaws uh, that was hired by these rich men to fight and battle over control of the land and the interest here. Uh, there were murders back and forth. Billy the Kid was arrested and charged with the murder of a sheriff and was tried and sentenced to hang. He was held in the top floor of the courthouse under guard. There was not a jail to put him in. There were two deputies guarding him and somehow Billy managed to escape, although he was in handcuffs and leg irons and he killed both the deputies and after about an hour, he was able to cut through his leg irons with a ax and rode out of town. Some people said he rode out of town singing. That's how it all went down with 21-year-old Billy the Kid in Lincoln, New Mexico. After being on the lam for about three months, Pat Garrett caught up with him and shot him down. And there you have it. Very cool place. Very cool place. Uh, hard to get to. I don't think you'd get here by accident. You'd no. Have to no. Wanna, you'd have to want to try to come here. Yeah. I don't know. Let me see if we can do these snow-covered mountains over here, if you can see them. That's part of the Capitan Mountains. And I would put my window down. But it is blowing like crazy out there. We're at uh, Valley of the Fires National Recreation Area in New Mexico. And we're about to go on the Mal Pai Trail, which kind of means rough country, bad country. And it is a uh, lava flow from about 5,000 years ago. It is um, a very young field. There is a younger one though in New Mexico. And it's not from a volcano, it's from vents in the valley floor that the lava escaped up through. So there was no volcano, but open vents to the lava underneath. And it's olivine basalt, which is similar to the lava of Hawaii. Um, and this was home to native peoples for thousands of years and you can like take this really cool walk through it it's really cold today the wind is blowing off these snow-covered mountains and uh, we are bundled up for winter <laughs> all right let's give it a shot there is a nice little campground in here also uh Looks like some of the sites even have power. We're not staying here, but uh, it was on our way through. Shot of the mountains in our background.
or just in this really cool valley in here in southeastern New Mexico. I like this. Oh, I see a critter. See it? Oh yeah, I see him. I like these bulbous tops. You like, like it went Oh yeah. How's it feel? Um, it's kind of scratchy. Yeah? Not as heavy as I thought it might be. It's porous. Yeah, it is porous, so I guess it should be lighter than I thought it would be. Mule deer, gray fox. Oh, they have ringtail cats in here. Crevice spiny lizard. I wonder if you saw the Apache pocket mouse. That might have been. That would have I didn't, been, know I didn't recognize it either. Road runners, cactus wren. Did you say that was Maria's favorite? Mm -hmm. The cactus wren? Yeah. Barbary sheep. Wow. From North Africa. Wow, I'd like to see one of those. Long hair on its neck yeah. and front legs. Very cool. So Golden that, eagle, my favorite eagle. So that's like a uh, Barbary sheep would be like a pirate sheep. It would from the Barbary coast, I guess. They, these, uh, these are called bubbles and tubes from the vents and bats love them. So it can be a hundred degrees on the surface. The surface can be a hundred degrees, but just 10 feet below ground 10 feet below the surface, it's 60 to 70. Oh, we're in the Tularosa Valley, which is where the petro petroglyphs are um, down the road a bit. So this is the native lands of the Mescalero Apaches. It's really constructed in a nice way that you can walk through here and yeah. get a good look at. You feel like you're really walking through it without yeah. walking on it and, you know, damaging the ecosystem. Right. Or the lava. Or your ankle. Or your ankle. This would be a really tough place to walk without, <laughs> without yeah. a walkway. Yeah, it'd be all ups and downs, wouldn't it? Oh, it's okay to walk off and explore the lava. You can hike to Little Black Peak. Whoa. This is kind of cool. Yeah. I don't guess you can really do much damage to this. No. Feet. No, it's more damage to yourself. Yeah. So cool. All right, onward. All right, if you happen to be traveling down US Highway 380 through this beautiful area of New Mexico, I would definitely recommend stopping here at the Valley of Fire and this nice little Malpai nature trail, loop trail is about a mile. It's a great 
leg stretcher and you get to look at something truly unique, a lava field. Pretty cool. How was your lunch, dear? I just had <laughs> the world's best green chili cheeseburger at Hatch, New Mexico, and it was delicious. It looked good. It was delicious. <laughs> I am not quite so uh, spicy. So uh, I had the brisket, which was in fact delicious. And uh, we ate right here at Old Sparky's. I highly recommend it. I think it might be a uh, hatch institution, I'm not sure. Interestingly enough, this area, Hatch, New Mexico, of course is famous for its green chilies and red chilies, I think, but it's also equally famous for pecan trees. And we were talking, we were pretty surprised because, you know, pecans are a staple of the deep south, pecan trees, um, where it is humid. And here we are in, you know, arid New Mexico, and it's uh, pecan, pecan grove after pecan grove, followed by chili fields. Um, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's uh, pretty stark and oddly pretty at the same time. We, the wind is blowing so hard today that it's like, it blows your hat off. There, the topsoil is just <coughs> blowing away, um, and uh, like you can see, this guy's little tractor here. Look at that! The wind. And uh, excitingly enough, we've probably seen 110 tumbleweeds flying across the road. You can't get a picture of them though. They're they're too quick and I'm too slow. I move too quick. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we're too slow. I'm too slow. Okay, we are hiking La Cueva Trail from the visitor center. It's supposed to be a short little nine-tenths of a mile hike. I guess out and back, I'm not sure, but we're going to the Hermit's residence. And when we get there, we'll tell you about the Hermit. <laughs> it's a very beautiful hike. It is cool, but the wind's not bad today. Yesterday it was it was howling, but today it's kind of a light wind, so although it is cool, we have a beautiful day to hike. Looks like some kind of an overlook here. Cool cactus. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Feral cactus, maybe? Feral I cactus, don't know. I would say. Onward. A lot of bird life in here. Little switch back. Okay. Actually get a little green tunnel yeah. on this hike. Kind of rare for our desert hiking, 
that we've done so far, mm -hmm. the little bit we've done. Well, let's not forget you've hiked the Grand Canyon numerous times, so you do have some desert hiking experience. <laughs> Me? Not so much. Oh, look wave it means cave. Didn't know that. I didn't either. Okay, this talks about the hermit. His name was Giovanni di Ag Agostini, and he was born in Italy, the 1800s, early 1800s. And he pursued a life of asceticism, which is a spiritual way of life where you try to live without uh, worldly, worldly uh, goods. And he traveled in Europe for a few years. Then he set sail for North America, never returned. He traveled all through North America, uh, South America, the Caribbean, Mexico, into North America, up to Canada. Then he came back down here to Southern New Mexico. He had quite a following of, uh, people that followed him uh, to learn his spiritual teachings. And he lived out here uh, by himself as a hermit. His followers down in town were worried uh, for his safety because there were uh, robbers in the area. So he promised that every Friday evening he would build a fire out here that they could see from town. And uh, one Friday in, I think, 1869, he, uh, uh, there was no fire, so his friends come out here to look after him and found him brutally murdered. And so that was, that's the story of the hermit. Uh, this cave right here, this rock shelter, actually uh, has been, uh, lived in uh, for many years before that. They found um, artifacts that uh, reached from 1 AD to 1450 AD, so people have lived in here forever. You're supposed to be able to see uh, mortars in the bedrock. I guess like over here, you can see where they were maybe scooped out, the holes where they used uh, mortars to grind the grain. And you can see the evidence of fires on the top. Very interesting. And we learned that La Cueva means the cave. The cave. <laughs> and this is the La Cueva Trail. Okay. Here's the trailhead warning at the start of the Dripping Springs Trail. Are you up to the challenge? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> This is the start of the Dripping Springs Trail. This must be three miles out and back. It's 
directly across from the La Cueva Trail at the Dripping Springs Visitor Center. So while you're there, you can knock off both trails. Okay, looks like we come to the intersection of several trails here. And we're going to continue on to Dripping Springs. The area behind this sign provides habitat for endangered plant and animal species uh, in historic ruins. Stay on the trail, it says. Look, can you see the bird? Just floating on the wind. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but it's some sort of a hawk drifting on the wind currents, searching the ground for prey. There it goes. It got something. And it's eating it on top of the yucca plant. Just absolutely beautiful out here. I must say, one of the prettiest places I've ever hiked. What do you think? Agree. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it is just gorgeous. Just beautiful. This bark on this juniper, I'm always saying it's a juniper because of the berries. Okay, we are at a historic site of the livery. Livery, chicken, chicken coop, and mercantile. Uh, close to Eugene Van Patten's mountain camp. Only a quarter of a mile left to go. Guests would arrive here on stagecoach and horses. Up at the camp's dining room, they would enjoy a wonderful meal, including seasonal fruits and veggies, beef, milk from a dairy cow, fresh eggs from the chicken. Pretty cool. Old historic buildings. I don't know if you can see inside. Not hardly, I guess. This definitely looks like this might have been a chicken coop. In here. Boy, well, you, you would know you were almost at paradise by the time you pulled up here. What a beautiful view. Must be a water trough. Cistern. Onward to the sanitarium. That must be her there. The Boyd Sanitarium.
just a plot. So actually the dining hall right there. And that's the building itself. Pretty cool spot. Okay, I am about out of breath, but I billy goated it up here to the top of the cliff, looking down on the sanatorium. I'll see if I can see Sue down there, or if she can see me. So, so, on to Dripping Springs in the mountain camp. Did you see, not see me? I saw you when you waved to me. I didn't see you after that. Oh. <laughs> but this lady said she saw you way up there. <laughs> it's actually chilly right here. So is this a pool? Could you see into there? You know, I didn't look down. But I think because it's, you it, know. It looks like it because you can tell. And there's this drain yeah. right here. Yeah, I'd say it was a cistern. I bet this probably. It's a cistern. Goes up, or it's like this lady said. All right, here is the dripping spring. All walled up. The old mountain camp. <clears throat> These steps are definitely not ADA compliant. How is that? Built in the shade of the cliff. dark in there. little more of the ruins before my battery dies. Out. Just about out. Alright friends, as my battery is dying, we're going to end this one right here. We thank you very much for watching. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you would. Subscribe if you haven't. And fare thee well, well mommies. mommies.